Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O. This video we're going to talk about the polymyxin antibiotics. I think this is a very important video. You know, I'd like to think that I don't make a video that isn't important. It's stuff that I want you to learn. But um, polymyxin, you're going to see why in just a little bit. It's super, super important. So let's start by just talking about how they work. So I'll just read through here. It interacts with the lipopolysaccharide in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. Uh, killing the cells through eventual disruption of the outer membrane and cytoplasmic membrane. So the key there is the outer membrane, meaning these drugs are going to be very important for gram-negative bacteria. And the reason that's important is because uh, most of the drug-resistant strains we're concerned about are gram-negative. At this point, about 95% of research funding is going towards dealing with gram-negative bacteria. And I covered that in the cell wall video, uh, the cell, you know, the gram-negative versus gram-positive video, the reasons why gram-negatives are, are generally more dangerous, right? You can't, some drugs can't get inside of them, some can be pumped out of them in ways they can't against gram-positives, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so they are the scariest of the organisms. There are some gram positives out there that do tons of damage, but uh, if you can create an antibiotic that can that can impact these drug resistant gram negatives, that that's going to have the potential to really help us as a species. So, but let's just talk about polymyxin B first. So it, they they were first discovered in the in the 40s, like lots of them. Isn't it crazy to think how many um, antibiotics were discovered way back then? We're not seeing them discovered at the same rate. I always like to say that the the low hanging fruit's already been picked. It's because there hasn't been like new classes of antibiotics in a long time. So so we need to do something. We need to come up with something to stay one step ahead of these microbes. So they were discovered uh, in 1947, so it would have been uh, uh, Bacillus, Bacillus poly polymyxa. So uh, poly uh, polymyxin B and polymyxin E, which you'll hear called colistin way more often, are the two that we're going to talk about. So polymyxin B, the problem is like these... Um, these antibiotics disrupt cell membranes. So the big, we want them to destroy the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria, but like it says there, can also impact the cytoplasmic membrane, the cell membrane or plasma membrane, which we have, right? So this is not an example of a selectively toxic drug because it can, it can impact our, our cell membranes. So polymyxin B um, and, and polymyxin E, they both, can, they both can affect the cell membranes of kidney cells, so they're nephrotoxic, but also the nervous system. But that's why polymyxin B is really only used topically in triple antibiotic uh, or other, other preparations. So triple antibiotic, you've got um, neosporin, which would have neomycin, bacitracin, and now polymyxin B. So those are going to be the three antibiotics that make up your neosporin or triple antibiotic. Um, when is this especially effective? It is still, you know, polymyxin antibiotics uh, are still um, very effective against Pseudomonas. But let's go ahead and move on and, and talk about colistin or polymyxin E. There have to be a little bit of a history lesson here as well. So the polymyxin antibiotics have been around for a long time. Uh, at one point, colistin was being used, but they realized that it was especially uh, nephrotoxic. It was damaging to the kidneys, so they quit using colistin. Uh, except for some limited uses. So it's uh, it's absorbed poorly, it causes kidney da damage, so primarily, I'll read here when it was primarily being used, oral dosing to de decontaminate the bowels to prevent infection in immunocompromised patients or patients undergoing invasive surgery slash procedures. So what that means is, since it isn't absorbed very well um, and can, can kill the gram-negative bacteria living in the gut, they would use it just to massively bring down the population of, of gram-negative bacteria in the gut. That's what a bowel decontamination is if there was concerns of, of these organisms causing an infection, killing a patient, getting into the body. So that was primarily what, what it was being used for, but it really wasn't being used much clinically. So since it wasn't being used clinically and for very limited uses, it started to be used agriculturally. So colistin has, has been used, uh, uh, especially in pork production. So like in pig, pig farms in China, they've used thousands of, of pounds of this antibiotic. And then it, so there wasn't, it wasn't being used for humans, so it had this agricultural use. Well, in 2015 is when they first found signs of colistin resistant organisms on, in, in, on these pig farms in China primarily. But then, you know, because the world has shrunk down because of travel and food and people moving and bringing organisms with them, and the rapid evolution of these organisms. By 2017, uh, we're already seeing rel relatively serious problems, or at least an increase, in colistin-resistant organisms in patients in the United States. So think about how quickly things can evolve and change from not being a problem to resistance on pig farms in China to resistance in humans in America in, in just a couple of years. In 2016, there was a handful of cases, but they all lived in, you know, they were all 
immunocompromised people living in long-term care facilities, and but now you're talking about relatively healthy people. So this, so this is this is a problem, and the reason this is a problem I've talked about in a different video is if the CRE organisms, the carbapenem resistant Enterobacteria C, which can already resist all of the beta lactam antibiotics, if they also become colostrum resistant, then we will have uh, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella pneumonia, Shigella, E. coli. We will have members of this family of of bacteria that we don't have treatments for like truly untreatable uh, bacteria with our, with our current antibiotics. So I'm hoping that we'll come up with alternatives. Uh, I'm a big fan of phage therapy, maybe quorum sensing inhibitors, whatever it might be. But so I, that's why I wanted to talk about this history part of it because it's been around a long time, but you're seeing the rapid resistance now because it, because it's be, it's agricultural uses. But then it is it is being used and has been used for a while. So uh, the main reason colson is important though is, is right now it is the last line of defense against these CREs, which are superbug infections, meaning they're multi-drug resistant. So let's talk about the intravenous uses then. So oral was just for bowel decontamination because it isn't absorbed well um, through the gut anyway. Intravenous dosing to treat serious systemic infections infections, primarily these CRE, drug-resistant superbugs, caused by multi-drug resistant pathogens. So it's been it's been used in that way since the 90s, but it was just used a little bit, and now you're seeing it used more and more. Uh, it was primarily used when they first started to reuse this or reintroduce this into, into treating humans. It was used uh, with children that had, with cystic fibrosis that had pseudomonas infections. So I, I've mentioned in other videos why pseudomonas is a big problem with CF patients. But we're now, we're now relying on this drug to be our last line of defense against these CRE organisms, carbapenem resistant Enterobacteria C. They are, um, you know, some of these, like if you have a CRE infection with treatment, um, half the people in the blood, if the, if the infection gets to the blood, half the people are still going to die. So uh, we are running out of antibiotics to, to fight to fight this um, this group. That's why if you went to Google right now and typed in nightmare bug, nightmare bacteria, chances are you're going to see one of the CREs. All right, so these are your polymyxin antibiotics. Polymyxin B is just used topically in the triple antibiotic ointments, and it's good against killing pseudomonas, just like polymyxin E is. But this one, this this is the antibiotic that out of all of them that I'm paying the most attention to because if this antibiotic stops working, we are in a much more serious situation than we already are now, which we already have tens of thousands of people dying from drug-resistant infections. So I definitely don't want to see this get any worse. I hope this helps. Uh, good luck sleeping tonight. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.